Welcome to this free immigration help channel. In this video, I will show you how to fill out the form I-824, which is the application for action on an approved application or petition. And uh, if you are familiar, if, if you have a family reunification process going, the I-130 petition for alien relative, then chances are you are familiar with I-824 as well. And I've been getting quite a few requests already from subscribers from the viewers of the videos on this channel uh, to explain how to fill out the IA24 so I decided to make this video as always before beginning I'm gonna mention I am NOT an immigration attorney this is not a legal advice all the information provided in these videos on this channel are directly from official government sources like USCIS and in this case we will be using this USCIS website USCIS.gov which is for US citizenship and immigration services this is what the front page looks like you can find this link in the description below so let's find the form i824 we're gonna click on forms at the very top navigation menu right here forms and then we're gonna click on all forms and this will give us all the applications and petitions that are available from USAS. so you can either scroll down it's in alphabetical numerical order or you can type in the form number 824 and there you go application for action on an approved application or petition so the very first thing i'm gonna note is that currently this application is not available to file online but there is a talk that is uh, going on uh, department of homeland security to actually implement this uh, application to be uh, available online which would be really nice it would save some time and uh, prevent a lot of mistakes but hopefully after watching this video you won't make any so uh, the very first thing I want you to double check, if you're watching this video, you know, six months from the day it was uploaded, make sure that the edition date is the most recent one that I'm showing in this video. So if you see that it is more recent than, what is it, December 2nd, um, 21st, 2021, um, if it's more recent than that, then pay a little bit uh, more attention to the application because some of the things might be different since it was updated. Okay, so we're gonna talk about where you, you'll have to file it, uh, the filing fees, some of the situations why you will wanna file IA24, uh, some of the special instructions and the links we will talk about later. But the very first two things that I want you to open up and have it in front of you are the instructions. That's number one, open up the instructions. You can open it in a separate tab and the application form IA24 itself. Now we will go step by step each uh, what you will be filling out uh, in this video as well, but I want you to, uh, I want to ask you for a favor. You know, if you are, if you're trusting me enough with the video, you know, explaining how to show this, uh, how to fill this application, I would like you, you know, to first read the instructions. If you go, go through the instructions, then 99% be sure that you will be good and you're not going to make any mistakes in the application um, using the video that I'm, you know, how to fill out that application. But in the instructions, sometimes there are the things that sometimes that we miss. And again, make sure that you have the most recent issue of the instructions. As you can see, this one is uh, expiring on December. So December 2023, after December 2023, it looks like they're gonna have a new one. But this one is uh, same date. It's from December 2nd, 2021. Just to double check that. Okay, so finally, let's get into the I-824. This is what the form looks like. You have two options filling it out. You can print it out and fill the whole thing with, uh, make sure to use black ink pen. I don't know why specifically they want black ink, but that's, yes, even, even right here, it says at the very top, start here, type or print in black ink, okay? So if you are filling it out yourself and you will still have to print it out eventually, it's just most of the application you can use, uh, this is family, so do, John, this is going to be our subject, our test subject for today's for today's video. So you can type most of the application on the computer, which I would recommend doing because it prevents, you know, unnecessary delays with the application if there is a mistake, if you know, because everybody got a different handwriting. If I'm an immigration officer, 
and I'm reading hundreds of these applications per day, chances are I'm going to confuse uh, capital I with a small case letter L somewhere in somebody's name because these names are foreign to me. So use the computer, much better use a computer. Okay, so let's start. Uh, the very first one part is going to be about you and obviously filling out the form IA24. Again, like I said, chances are you're dealing with I-130. So you're either applicant or someone who's submitting an application or a petitioner. Petitioning someone, obviously, for a family member, if you are, you know, dealing with I-130, most likely you will be the petitioner, uh, not the applicant. So, moving further to uh, personal information, you got your last name, first name, middle name, if you don't have any, don't leave it blank, put not applicable. Again, the same rule goes for this application as well, because you're filling it out uh, on paper, no blank spaces. If it's not applicable, don't leave it blank, put N slash A. Company organization name, if any, again, not applicable. Current recent immigration status, all right, so depending on, let's say, you know, let's say this is for, let's, this is the example case for this application, right? John Doe, he is from Brazil, as he usually is, and he is petitioning for his uh, spouse. For, for his wife to come from the from from Brazil, uh, John Doe he has uh, uh, he's a permanent resident. He got his permanent residence recently because of something asylum, for example, and now he's petitioning for his uh, wife who's abroad in Brazil. So the petition USA's petition was approved, but the residency changed and now wife is actually in the United States. So they want to do. Um, they want to process it here or maybe they want to change the consulate we will talk about different situations but this is the situation so current this is John Doe filling out the petition obviously and he is the petitioner so it is his current recent immigration status and like I said immigration status he's a permanent resident moving further certificate of naturalization if John Doe was a citizen uh, he would have had the naturalization certificate number because he's not a citizen yet, he doesn't have that, so not applicable. And here again, it says if you're a US citizen type or print, not applicable. So don't leave it blank if it, if it doesn't apply to you. Alien registration number, probably, probably you would have that. So you would enter the alien registration number. If there is none, then just type none. Date of birth, country of birth, very straightforward. Country of citizenship, straightforward. IRS tax number, if, if any. You, you, you would have to enter. Uh, most of the times the IRS tax number is uh, if this is an organization that is petitioning for somebody and they're moving on the petition, that's what they will be putting here. But if you don't have any, put none. US social security number, you'd probably have that. And US is online account number. If you have received the email, and some people do receive that email, some people don't, uh, with the USCIS online account number, when they register for online account number, uh, not the number, sorry, the account, with this application, you might not even deal with it. But here's the thing, if you have filed your I-130 online, then you definitely do have the USCIS account. Now, whether you have the account number or not, it depends, if you don't, just put none, that's fine, but if you do, then you definitely enter it here. It will make easier for whoever's reviewing this case um, to pull up the existing I-130 case. So mailing address, obviously straightforward, where you're getting your mail is the mailing address. Physical address is where you are physically located. For example, maybe you are, you know, maybe John Doe is in Brazil right now, spending time with his wife in Brazil, waiting for the petition to be approved. His ma mailing address obviously is here, his current like residency, um, and then his physical address, because he's physically somewhere else, would be in Brazil. So again, very straightforward. Okay, we're done with part one now. Part two, this really is it's a very short part. All you're basically selecting is the reason for the request. And I'm gonna read all of the reasons that are, that would be applicable for you um, and whichever one is correct then then the one you are will be selecting so the very first one is 1a a duplicate approval notice okay 1b u.s citizenship and I've, I've, 
I don't know if I, if I need to explain it to you. If you do need a duplicate approval notice, for example, you require the approval notice, but the original one that was sent to you, you lost it. Something along those lines. There you go. This is it. 1B. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, USAS, to notify a new U.S. consulate different from the one that I originally requested through the, U the U.S. Department of State National Visa Center or Kentucky Consular Center. USAS will notify the U.S. consulate about the approval of non-immigrant visa petition or about a new port of entry. The port of entry is different from what I originally requested in that case, about the approval of a waiver application. Please notify the U.S. consulate or port of entry at, and then you would select the, obviously, if that's the case for you, you would select 1B, and then you would put the port of entry or the U.S. consulate that needs to be notified where the new location is going to be. Makes sense. All right, 1C, USAS to notify a U.S. consulate through the NBC about my adjustment of status to permanent resident in the United States. Very straightforward, no questions there. Please notify the U.S. consulate at so that my spouse and or children may accompany or, or follow to join me. That's very straightforward and that's one of the one of the reasons why most of the people are going to be filling this uh, application out is because along the way, if you know, uh, permanent resident, um, you know, filing, being petitioned for in a certain category and then along the way, if, they got married and now they want the spouse and children to accompany them if there are children now and if there's a wife now. Makes sense. 1D, USCIS to send my approval immigrant visa petition to the NVC. Uh, sometimes, again, there are, there are cases where uh, USCIS approves the petition and doesn't send it to NVC and they require the IA-24. Most of the times, if there is some kind of mistake or something along those lines in the application um, or the original US consular office um, or embassy was not selected. And then the 1E e is USAS to notify the Department of State that I have become a US citizen through naturalization. Okay, so whatever reason for you, you, you already know why you need to file this form, so it will be very straightforward to you. Okay, moving further now to the part three, uh, which just is, is labeled other information. Provide the following information about the principal beneficiary of the previous application or petition, if other than you. Okay, now we're talking about the beneficiary. Again, if you are dealing with an I-130 petition for alien relative, you know that there's a petitioner. If you have applied for somebody, you're a petitioner, and then there's a beneficiary. Beneficiary is basically the one who is receiving the benefit of the petition that you have submitted. So in the part three, this is going to be the information of the beneficiary, which in our example is the spouse of John Doe by the name of Jane Doe. So, uh, so 1A, there's form number of previous, previously approved application or petition. So in our example, John Doe is petitioning for Jane. So it's going to be I-130. Receipt number, obviously the from 797, the form 797, the notice of action that you received, it's going to be there and it might look something like uh, SRO, well, whatever. Please don't check, it might be a real thing. Filing date of application or petition. Initially, that would be the priority date, all right? If you're familiar with I-130, you're familiar with priority dates, you're gonna put that here. Approval date. That's when the I-130 was approved, all right. Family name, so now we are going to the information about Jane Doe, again, not applicable middle name. Date of birth, country of birth, alien registration number, if any, daytime telephone number. Yes, they actually want the phone number for the beneficiary. So keep that in mind, definitely provide all that information. Now the mailing address, same thing, mailing address for the beneficiary. It might be foreign country, that's fine if it is, you put it there. Physical address, it's where the beneficiary is currently at. And then we're moving further to the dependents now. And I'm gonna read this part right here really quickly and I'll explain you some of the stuff briefly. If you selected part two, item number 1C, and that is, if you remember, for so that my spouse and my children may accompany or follow to join me. And that's follow to join me, often we just use it uh, uh, we immigrants that are dealing with I-130, we just say, follow to join me. That's, that's really kind of, 
Anyway, you get the point. So dependence. If you're dealing with follow to join me, then you're gonna be filling out. Obviously, you know, if if you don't have dependents, then you know you don't have children. Then you're not putting it. But provide the following information about the dependents for whom you are requesting follow to join benefits. Okay, so that would be uh, spouse. That would be children. Obviously, if you're already petitioning for spouse, like for example, in our case. Um, John Doe is petitioning for Jane, then you're just putting dependents, all right? If you need additional space for your dependents, use the space provided in parts, part seven, additional information, which I'll show you how to fill that out. So dependents, same thing, uh, last name, first name, middle name, date of birth, country of birth, country of citizenship or nationality, relationship to principal applicant, dependents email address, dependents daytime phone number. And there is one dependent, two, three, four dependents total and then we are moving to foreign address of dependents so hopefully you have one for each dependent but if you don't then part seven i'll show you how to fill that out but foreign address for dependents in care of obviously street city province postal country makes sense okay contact information for dependents just a telephone number and that's really it we're moving on to the part four which is application statement contact information declaration certification and signature now for the purposes of this right here some of these are grayed out as you can see and for the signature obviously it is grayed out is because once you're done filling it out you print it out and then you sign it obviously by, by hand you can put the date though um, actually printed on this one so the very first thing is applicant's statement you will select one of the options there are three i'm gonna i'm gonna read all three of them i can read and understand english most of the times it's going to be 1a if you are using an interpreter who is helping you, then you will select 1B. And then at my request, the preparer. So you can have an interpreter and you can have a preparer. The difference, preparer, if let's say, for example, you went to one of these like, uh, like immigration clinics, right? That like paralegals sit down with you and they help you fill out the application, that would be prepared. Interpreter is if somebody would translate this form to you and interpret it to you. So pretty much same thing, but a little bit different, unfortunately. But the important part, and I get a lot of this comment, uh, questioning in the comments. If your brother or your father helped you fill out this application and translate it for you and told you, okay, let's fill it out, or maybe your cousin sat down with you and fill it out for you while you were telling him what to select maybe because you're not good with computer or something along those lines you don't need to worry about that you don't need to put them this is only for official like service people that do interpret interpreting of immigration documents and preparing of immigration documents that's really it hopefully i don't get in trouble for <laughs> recommending this <laughs> but uh, honestly this is this is the advice that was given to me from an immigration attorney, so I'm not an immigration attorney myself, all right? So don't please don't hold me like super accountable for this kind of stuff. Uh, but moving further, uh, applicants, contact information, we have phone number, mobile phone number, because that's different, and then the email address. The declaration certification is that you certify that everything that was uh, filled in to the application is the correct, and to the best of your knowledge, and all so far so forth, you're not making anything up, straightforward. Obviously, signature, you will have to print it out and sign it. Um, don't forget to sign it, it has to be signed. And then the interpreter's information, if you had an interpreter or prepare, like I said, their information will be here. If not, don't leave it blank, put not applicable, just to be on the safe side. I know sometimes it can feel like it's an overkill, doing all of this throughout the whole thing, it seems ridiculous, but I cannot tell you how many times I've seen applications come back because specifically that reason, blank spaces. I, I, I've seen many, many, many applications that came back and I had many comments from people on this channel uh, saying that they got an application back, literally saying with a reason, blank spaces, don't leave blank spaces, put not applicable or none. It's very s strict for some reason for USA. Okay, contact information for the person preparing this application. Again, not applicable. And then part seven is additional information. Just in case 
if you have more than three dependents, that's it. You're just typing in the page number, part number, item number, and then you're adding whatever it is additional information that you want to add to the application. Just don't forget to fill this in uh, with your own uh, information. You can't on the computer because it's not great. It's not grayed out, so you, you, you can't even click on it. So you will have to print it and then fill it out by hand. So that's really it. As you can see, very straightforward application. Let me quickly show you a few things whenever it comes to where to file and the filing fee. Obviously, filing fee, you can find it right here. I'll put this link in the description below as well. Currently, it's $465, but these things tend to go up uh, each, each year. These things get more expensive. So if you're watching this video six months down the road, don't be surprised if it's if it's different. Uh, now, where to file? We can find the direct filing addresses for form I-824 link in where to file. I'm gonna open it in new tab and see if we can find it. There we go. So we got, if you are filing with, so you can file it with USS or CVP. Most of the times you will be filing it with USS. So here is your address in Arizona. <laughs> If you're sending it using the USPS, this is where you're gonna send. I would recommend using USPS. But if you want to use a private courier, like a FedEx, UPS, or DHL, this is the address that you will be sending it to. And again, if I don't forget, I'll put this, uh, ad, not the address, but the link for this in the description of this video. So I think that's really it. Um, let's see, there are some form filing tips. Filing tips for Form I-24 application, complete all section. Okay, we will reject the form if these fields are missing. So part three, receipt number. So make sure the receipt number is there. Don't skip that. It's very, apparently it's very important for them. And they wouldn't say it if it wasn't like, if people weren't missing it, don't miss it. Uh, then special instructions, e-notification. If you want to receive an email or text message that we have accepted your IA24, complete form G1145 e-notification of application. So you can do that as well. And then in the related links, it's just the address and then like box filing tips, which you really don't need to worry about that. Uh, so that's really it. If you have any questions after this video, if you have any questions, just ask them in the comments below. And uh, every day for the past, for a while, I've been doing every day now, I go through all the comments uh, and I answer your questions to the best of my abilities, of course. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found this video useful. God bless and I'll see you in the next video.